Okay. This is going to be a good one. Um, I've been working with wool for almost five years now. Um, and spinning, uh, weaving, and felting. And I have come to find um, all, there's a lot of uh, bullshit around it that was discouraging me from getting into it for the longest time. And I'm here to um, set that all straight for everyone from here on out. You don't need any tools at all. All you need is two large cardboard boxes and two hands. Um, you don't need to wash the wool at all. And in fact, I don't ever wash my felts. All my felts have the lanolin left in, original uh, waxy oil from the sheep uh, that keeps it waterproof. Um, and antimicrobial. That is the antimicrobial constituent of wool. Wool itself is not, it's not antimicrobial, it's the lanolin. So don't wash it out. Get raw wool. And... As you can see, you don't need to clean the wool because as we're processing it, all the dirt is flowing out. I call this uh, finger carding, using your fingers instead of a, a carding comb. I'm just lightly picking up and overlapping that piece with this piece. All your pieces you want to be overlapping in some way or another. All right, after you get a good layer um, that's roughly the size of uh, the bottom of your box, and you're gonna transfer it. And give it a little shake. And here's the here's the debris coming out. There you go. I'm gonna spread it back out evenly as possible and make sure that there aren't any holes. If you see any holes, like I saw one right here, just cover it up. I'm also going back and cleaning the whole thing. So, this is why we don't just break it up directly into the box. And this is why we don't have to wash the wool. We just make sure it's really dry. That's the number one. Number one thing about this method of um, felting is that you gotta make sure the wool is super dry so that when you're pulling it apart, the dirt just crumbles out. All right. It's almost impossible to work with wool in humid uh, weather. If, if you don't pull the dreads apart and hear a rip, it's not drying up. You gotta hear a rip. Yeah. Alright, so let's say that you're doing this on your kitchen table. And uh, you need to set the table for dinner and you're not done with a whole layer um, you don't have to do a whole layer you can do pieces uh, you just need to overlap them so it's going right there and put probably 
like three of those pieces in here. Uh, and you got the second piece on top, overlapping by uh, a couple inches. And then I'll make another piece. Put it right here and overlap a couple inches. Second layer is complete. Um, made with those three pieces. So I had the two seams on the second layer and this third layer is going to have the seam running down um, perpendicular so it helps strengthen uh, the bond as they get pressed together flashlight and shine it down and see if you can see the bottom through any of the wool and if you can then there's a thin spot and you need to add some wool add some more wool if you see any spots Because if you don't, then those spots are going to be holes, or really thin spots, and then they're going to wear into holes eventually. So, make sure you cannot see the bottom. And this looks like the perfect, perfect layering job, nice and thin. So, three of those layers that you saw me put on, um, three of those equals, um, a very thin, a very thin, like that thin, um, felt. Good girl, daddy. So, basically, uh, uh, what we've done is, um, I opened up the fibers, um, by hand as much as we could, and then we layered them, and now uh, we need to get them to go into each other like this we need all the fibers to go into each other work into each other and um you can't really do that by um applying like a bunch of pressure on it really fast um because if you try to press them too soon or too quickly uh you'll they won't go into each other they'll buckle like this Yeah, and if it buckles, then um, it's really a pain in the butt to um, to felt um, and have it be of any quality. So, um, in order to get the fibers to go together smoothly um, and uh, thoroughly, uh, then we have to do a progressive job. <laughs> jostle it a little bit by a little bit. Just do that for a couple minutes until the level inside falls down a couple inches. Alright, the next thing you're going to do is take your other box and cut it in half. Lay it out on a tarp, put it over.
There you go. After you flip it over under your piece of cardboard, I'm gonna take a gallon jug and you're gonna heat up a sewing needle and poke a bunch of holes in the lid so um, you can have a showering effect. And you're gonna wet it uh, incremental, incrementally um, and evenly. Okay. Just want to let it drain. You need to let it drain. It needs to be on a slight angle so that you're not um, working in a pool of water. You just want to wet it and get it to smash down, but then you want uh, to drain the excess water because it's impossible to felt um, when your fibers are um, floating in water. Helps to have some kind of a rod to roll it up with. And then what we're going to do is just let this drain. Just let this drain for a little while. Lean it up against something. And let the excess water drain out. <clears throat> Alright. It's drained a little bit. You want to try a couple strings around it, hold it together. There you go. Now we want to start rolling it uh, and start out uh, with little pressure and work our way up to applying more pressure and more agitation. After about 20 minutes, um, or at least 10 minutes <clears throat> of doing that first wrap, you're gonna untie it. 
and I'm gonna turn it around and start unrolling it away from you. You gotta take your stick and put it down to the other end. And do the same thing. See, there's a. Uh, It's all right if there's a little one, but you want to minimize them as much as possible because they can get um, out of control, those folds. They uh, tend to undo themselves when you turn around each time because you see the fold is going this way and now I'm going to roll it up this way, it's going to push it back that way. But After doing it for another 10 or 20 minutes, it should, um, this first piece of cardboard should start to fall apart. Now it's ready for the second piece. It has been rolled up this way, and it's been rolled up this way, so now we're going to turn it over. Could have used about twice as much as that, but this will suffice. You don't want to add too much. You just want it down. All right, and uh, we're gonna apply more pressure this time because this wool is sticking together um, really well already. So you can start to. Smash it by foot now. And it helps to have a chair or two chairs um, or doorways, something to hold on to um, so you can uh, help bounce. We've been using a stick, a walking stick or something. You don't need the box any longer this point really we only need the box um, for the beginning stages of the fibers working themselves into each other um, uh, so that 
they don't stick to um, themselves. Like if I were to just roll this up initially, uh, roll it up on itself, then it would um, it would never stay f as a sheet. Um, but once you get it as a sheet, um, then you can roll it up on itself, and that's the best and quickest way to um, get it to ratchet itself um, in on itself, is, is what I say. Um, it needs to remain damp to the touch, but not soaking wet. No, not dripping wet. to have a smooth stick. Mm. What the stick does is it um, it helps to efficientize each um, uh, agitation um, along the entire length of the uh, of the felt instead of just in where your hands are pushing. Um, so this stick makes it like at least twice as efficient and twice as fast. Um, to process this wool and that's also the significance of the ribs um, going um, being placed horizontally um, when when we roll it up um, it's actually more effective than um, bubble wrap uh, all right. now we're going to turn it 90 degrees Turn it over. So this is basically, um, I, don't, I don't know if you can, uh, so we, we, we rolled it up one way, then we rolled it up the other way, and then we turned it over. And then we rolled it up that way, and then we rolled it up the opposite direction, and then we turned it 90 degrees, and then we rolled it up that way, and then we rolled it back, and now we have just flipped it over, so this is um, the last two directions um, to be done, uh, that can be done, uh, and then uh, and then we're just going to cycle back through um, those rotations, um, and it, it ratchets it up, and... and uh, firms up the felt um, more and more exponentially um, after this point. Good girl. At this point we're going to turn it over and do the last direction. Now at some point you're going to want to go through with some scissors or if you have shears and you're going to want to take off uh, cut off any um, surface um, fibers that are um, hanging loose like all of this there's a bunch of like little micro fibers that um, that aren't integrating and instead of pulling them out um, which is just going to start the pulling out of, uh, of other fiber heads um, just cut them off Put through and see what 
see where everything's at. All right, I ran out of battery, but I continued uh, going around and uh, rolling up each direction, flipping over and doing it on the four directions on the other side. Uh, went through those once again, and then um, I did the fulling stage in order to get it to look this felted while you were gone, while the battery was charging. Um, in the fulling stage, all I do did was take it like this and the idea is that we've already pressed it we already pressed it down flat in one direction um, and fulling is what they call it um, the way I envision it is uh, attempting to press it the felt in on itself from all the other directions um, on that two-dimensional plane so like as I take it and push it into my chest I'm not just pushing it to try to flatten it more I'm pushing it specifically to try to get it to bend and press in on itself on that two-dimensional plane and they call this fulling and after I did this for 20 minutes then I fold it fold it in a different way by Rolling it up like this and then holding it at the end and pressing the end, the rolled up end, uh, pressing it in on itself. Pressing the end in on itself. And I just messed with it with each end for a couple minutes each, like this. And then unrolled it and rotate 90 degrees and I did all the eight directions um, fulling and now it looks like this it's totally different um, because the last stage um, metamorphosizes rather quickly so now it can start <laughs> There, and I just unfolded it, fold, fold it by pulling it um, back apart um, from itself. But I didn't just undo um, the fulling process by it pressing in on itself. Um, it became tighter, and then by me then pulling it apart, it actually is pulling the knots even tighter. Um, so, so yeah. And you can go back through and fold it again, and then unfold it and pull it, pull it back out again, and it's just going to um, tighten, tighten it down further and further. And uh, but at this stage, this is this is quality enough to wear. Now all I have to do is make one more piece that's this size, and um, sew it on top of it along uh, the sides and at the top of the shoulders and leaving the the head hole and the uh, arm holes in the upper left and right and then that's a vest so so yeah this is how you can make your own clothes super easy this hoodie has lasted me um three years now Three winters I have worn it. So, and it's still got a couple, several more. Five more. So this, and it's totally waterproof. Um, the way that we're felting here it hasn't used any hot water, uh, let alone boiling water, and, um, and let alone soap. It's not even using any soap. So um, that leaves all of the lanolin uh, wax left uh, and it felt so it actually is uh, completely rainproof now um, so yeah this is a super simple 
This is my new super simple way for everyone to be able to make their own clothing. Um, I'm making some moccasins back here. And if you're bigger than me, um, I'm only five foot six, 130 pounds. Um, this is how large of a piece um, I need uh, to make the front of a vest. Um, and if you're larger than me and you need a larger piece, um, you can, instead of using a large regular box, um, I found these uh, bicycle boxes uh, to work really well. Um, they're a lot, a lot larger um, in space than, uh, than a regular box. And um, you can just uh, cut, cut off the, the top, basically, uh, and use that top piece um, to flip over, uh, flip your wool over on, and, and wet it and roll it up in. And bicycle boxes will make a, a felt that uh, should be large enough uh, for the front and back uh, piece of a vest for anyone. Uh, of any large size so this is how you can do it with a bike box uh, box that bicycles come in um, you can get these boxes from any bike store this is the upper end uh, of what I make um, I found to be uh, convenient um, efficient for me to make um, anything larger than this um, you'll start to have a difficulty in working with it and flipping it. Yeah, bike box um, is definitely uh, a little bit more efficient um, than that size box. And this um, election sign material or corrugated plastic is what they call it is uh, reusable. Um, so it's more efficient than um, than using uh, one piece of. Uh, cardboard and then throwing it back in the recycling bin Got some beautiful felts Yes, you do Good sheep